America, land of the free, home of the brave. Now, I've been on the internet for a long time, and I've enjoyed talking with a lot of Americans over the years. I love the American... I love American values, like freedom of speech and liberty. Um, I love the American media. I love the comedy news network that is BuzzFeed. And I love other political commentators like Tucker Carlson. I think... We all need to stand up for certain American values like freedom of speech and the rule of law. These are incredibly important and they've become increasingly threatened in Britain, in Europe, even by Silicon Valley who are now banning people who they don't agree with. And I, I think freedom of speech is one of the core values for actually make proper civilization happen. I mean, if you can't express yourself in a free and open society, then you're going to find other means to express yourself and they're not always going to be happy, they're not always going to be great. So this is why we need to defend things like freedom of speech. American TV shows like The Simpsons are watched around the world and have shaped ideas and culture in ways we can't even imagine. Billions of people have watched these shows over the years, and the values that they contain might seem like normal everyday values to us, but to other people they may not always be the sort of normal values that they follow, and I think American culture does have a huge effect on the whole planet. America remains the most powerful cultural and military force on the face of the earth. I understand why people supported Obama. And I also understand why many of the same people went on to support Trump. There are large-scale political changes, there is a culture war that's going on, and I think we need to really understand what's happening if we hope to actually control it. But I don't actually think we can control it. I don't think governments can control the internet. I don't think governments control can control what people think and what they feel. I, I don't think... Um, I don't think it, I, I think this is beyond their capability. So I'm going to share a few things that I've noticed over the years with you guys. And I also wanted to refer to a document I created a few years back called Seven Great Things About the USA. Now, I'm not afraid to be critical. There are problems which I'm going to talk about. But things that America could probably do better. Um, one of the things off the top of my head is not being so insular, you know? This is one thing that Britain needs to do too, you know, there are many interesting things happening around the world, many interesting innovations that I think we need to adopt if Britain and America want to remain the sort of number one countries in the world, and I don't know if we're fast enough to do that. So anyway, here's the super patriotic introduction. Awesome. I published this article on my website a while ago and I've shared it on Facebook but I haven't really done much with it. Um, it's at my website um, dwbeck.com, I'll leave a link in the description if you want to have a read of this for yourself. But uh, I called it 7 Great Things About the USA. So I'm sure you can, you can see this now, right? Cool. Some people like to criticise America for various reasons, so I thought I would put 7 Great... Well, I thought I would post 7 Great Things About the USA. So, uh, yeah, let's jump right in. Freedom of speech. Many nations have some freedom of speech, but more and more nations, like the UK, Europe, and elsewhere, are sending people to prison over Facebook posts and so-called hate speech. American freedom of speech is pretty great, and Americans should really defend it. Silicon Valley and the Russian KGB need to be reminded that they don't have a, non a monopoly on the truth, and that they should not meddle in the politics of other nations. Now, um, this was one of the key things about the original Star Trek, right, which has kind of been lost over time, but there are a lot of people who are looking at the Vietnam War, and they were sort of saying, well, maybe our countries shouldn't be meddling. Now, um, if you look at what Silicon Valley's done recently, you could argue it's a good thing or a bad thing, but they've banned a lot of political groups on Facebook. You could argue, well, it's their platform, they can ban anyone they want to, right? Well, should they be able to? I mean, should they be influencing the politics of other countries just because they don't like the politics that are being put forward? 
I mean, if the government's going to demand me do it, that's fair enough. But I don't think Silicon Valley should be censoring people that they disagree with. Just, well, for the sake of it, really. But, uh, yeah, let's move on to number two. The American Constitution. The United States is lucky to have such a great, almost utopian document to defend their basic rights. The UK doesn't have a formal constitution, and so our freedoms can be chipped away over time. Now, here's the thing, you don't lose your freedom all at once, right? People would riot. But over, over years and years and years, they can salami slice your freedoms down. You know, take her freedom away here and a freedom away there. Freedom of speech has been broadly attacked. Hundreds of people are arrested every year over things that they say online through the Malicious Communications Act in the UK. But still, I digress. This is meant to be about America. I thought I would do a bonus one to get seven plus a bonus one, because why not? And this is going to be the McMuffin round, okay? Because I love American cuisine, you know? Um, there are some, you know, really, really, there's some really great foods coming out of America. But I have to say, the McDonald's double egg and sausage, double sausage and egg McMuffin meal has to be, you know, one of my favourite breakfasts on the go. Convenience food, it's, uh, oh, you just can't beat it. I don't know why they just don't serve their breakfast menu all day, every day. Because, to be honest, that's all I would buy anyway, you know? Hey, just quickly whilst I'm here, um, I'm going to go into this on a later video, but um, the world's already warmed up by about one and a half degrees, and climate change is, is really bad news, and I actually think that um, Donald Trump really cares about climate change, but he's um, kind of saying he doesn't because it's um, kind of the Republican platform and he needs to kind of secure those votes, but just thought I'd point this out, you know, the world is warmer, there are more natural disasters, the climate is changing and it's going to get worse, we need to do something about it, you know? Because um, we've got the army to protect people from um, terrorists from um, other countries, right? But we um, also need to protect the people from climate change. Because honestly, doing nothing is going to cause so many problems, you know, we do need to act. So, I did say I was going to be a bit critical, which, you know, is fine because, well, we're all friends, right? So, thing is, American cops do a really difficult job, and I'm not even joking. I wouldn't want to be a cop in America. A lot of cops die. But one thing I think that they could probably do, with generally speaking, is more training. Because I was looking at the amount of training you do in America and the amount of training the cops do here. And they do loads more training in Europe generally. And, you know, I'm sure some places in the United States are absolutely great and they do loads of training. But I kind of wonder if the American cops should do more conflict resolution. And uh, because I think it would probably save lives, you know. I We've all seen those um, horrendous videos online. But, uh, yeah, just to reiterate, I think the police do a very, very difficult job. Especially in America, where everyone's armed, and you could potentially lose your life. And I'm sure it's unbelievably stressful sometimes. And I don't blame the American cops for um, being a lot more authoritarian than we are in, say, Europe or Canada or other places. But, uh, yeah, perhaps more conflict resolution training might be good. Or perhaps even a cultural exchange, where police from one country might go and work in another country for six months or a year. Um, just putting ideas out there because I think we will probably save lives. So the other thing that America I feel could possibly do better is I think they need a bit of an overhaul of their criminal justice system. I mean if you look at the number of um, prisoners in the world, well you can see here, um, two million people, over two million people were actually you know, locked up in the United States. Um, there's 1.5 million people in China that are locked up, but they've got a much bigger population than the United States anyway. Okay, so you're a poor dad, right? And you've got a kid and you're paying your wife child support. And basically you lose your job, right? So you've got no income. You might have to um, get state benefits, possibly. So what's going to happen? Well, in the UK, generally speaking, your income will go down. You would um, probably get about £300, say $350 a month um, unemployment benefit. And basically, you probably wouldn't actually lose any money to the child benefit, right? Because the government 
pay would probably pay for that. They might even take some of your three hundred pound a month away. I don't know, but it's unlikely. So what happens in America? Well, I've actually heard that a lot of that, a lot of dads will get locked up because they'll get um, basically non-payment of child support, you know, which is a crime, and they'll get locked up. And um, I don't think that's a very good solution. So what happens in the UK, for example, is people well the one parent will pay money to the government then the government will pay money to the person getting child support so that um money is pretty secure going to a child and if a father can't afford to pay for one month or they lose their job or something then it's not really a big deal because they'll just get another job eventually i guess um but yeah um i know a lot of men especially men get locked up in uh, prison in america for this for non payment of child support and uh I just think laws like that are kind of silly like why are you punishing these people um are you punishing them for being poor i, I mean a lot of dads who can't or mums who can't pay child support end up um in prison just because they're too freaking poor to pay so that's something that i think should probably be addressed research and technology now china may be the world's workshop Arguably, I know they've moved on a heck of a lot recently, but the United States still leads the world in research and development and science. Americans were the first people to land on the moon and still lead the world in research and development, as far as we know. I mean, maybe uh, someone went back in time and landed on the moon from the future, you know, just to say that they were the first person on the moon, but I don't know. Okay, anyway, getting back to the article, if you want to conduct research, the United States is probably the best place in the world to conduct it. The rest of the world benefits from the drugs developed by the United States medical research companies, as well as other research and developments coming from the United States. Still, there seems to be a huge divide in America between the technocrats, the scientists, the academics and others, and the general public. That's a, a bit of a shame, really. Um, the United States remains the world's superpower, and though the US isn't always the most peaceful of nations, to put it mildly, its influence, as well as the threat of total nuclear annihilation, has kept other nations in check, and has helped make the world a more peaceful place. In 1914, Europe started one of the most bloodiest wars in history. Today, such a thing is unthinkable. The USA's massive defense spending also makes it cheaper for other nations, but would otherwise need to makes it cheaper for other nations to defend themselves. The triumph of capitalism. Capitalism is often criticized by communists and people as a force for bad by activists, though actually the reverse is true. Capitalism is a system whereby the rich and increasingly anyone with expertise, an idea or a passion can start a small business and compete in the market. The rise of capitalism around the world is helping to end poverty. Capitalism turns people from victims to the masters of their own destiny. In 1990, 36% of the world lived in poverty. Today, it's less than 10% of the world that live on less than $1.90. Now this is absolutely massive. This is a huge change all around the world. And a lot of it has got to do with capitalism. Countries that adopt capitalist ideas tend to advance a lot more quickly. And people tend to become a lot richer than countries that don't. So, just a very quick note, I just wanted to say Mr. Bernie Bernard Sanders isn't actually um, a communist or a socialist. Now, he might believe in nationalised healthcare or something, which is a feature of perhaps socialism, but actually loads of capitalist systems, like the UK, have this kind of healthcare. Um, what socialism actually means is you believe in nationalising pretty much every single industry. Basically, every single company will be owned by the government, okay? 
and that's not very, that's a horrible thing, right? It doesn't work properly. But yeah, Bernie Sanders may say he's a socialist or a democratic socialist, but he's a capitalist who just wants more state spending. Anti-corruption. Corruption is a huge problem in many parts of the world. Corruption sucks the life out of economies and is a huge barrier to nations' financial success. The United States is very hot on anti-corruption laws and is a force for good in the world generally. Now I'd like to say a personal thank you for Donald Trump. He isn't always perfect, but he did kill off TTIP, that horrible legislation that would enshrine corporate law into our laws, that secret legislation that we couldn't even know about that was going to completely change our countries. But thank you so much Donald Trump for killing it dead. Hollywood and culture. American culture has spread around the globe and has had a huge impact outside of the United States. Shows like Star Trek, The Simpsons, Star Wars, even The Big Bang Theory and Friends and others have been sh have shown the world other ways of thinking and have had a huge impact on people around the world. Now honestly it's really hard to know how much impact these shows have actually had but I suspect it's an awful lot. I suspect that showing other people the American values, the fact that Americans can mock their government, mock their officials, can sort of poke fun at their establishments without having the head chopped off or something, it kind of shows even the leaders in these countries that they don't have to be completely totalitarian, we don't have to have these overwhelming horrible policies that limit freedom. If you just let people live their lives how they want, they generally live good lives and they generally build strong economies and the government doesn't need to control everyone. It just needs to let people be free. Okay, so thank you guys for watching. I really hope you liked the video. Please like and subscribe and hit the bell icon for more of this and loads of other random stuff. And I promise you I'm going to try to make some fantastic video content. So thank you very much for watching. And please like and share with this with your friends. It would be unbelievably awesome if you could share this. Okay. So thank you very much and God bless America.